prophetic things to release. <clears throat> um, you know, the last meeting we were speaking over at the uh, um, TBO, and um, the Lord had given me a word about hearing his voice, listening and hearing the voice of the Lord. And I felt like the Lord was, uh, tonight he was showing, he was speaking to me about you know, how critical it is, of course, to, to hear and know and distinguish the voice of God in these days we're living. And there's a lot of confusion and uh, uncertainty. But how many know that there's no uncertainty with the Lord? Amen. Amen. But um, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts, uh, the eighth chapter. I want to look at a few things there. And um, I want to say uh, thank the Lord. Amen. For uh, the pastor, pastors. Amen. Pastor Peltz. Amen. The pelts, amen. Thank God for um, everybody that's here. Thank God for my my daughter, amen, on the drums, and amen, and uh, and Brother Brian, amen, and thank God for all the help, um, amen, that came tonight uh, with us. I mean, thank God for each one of you. Why don't you turn and look at the person next to you and say, it's good to see you tonight. Um, it's always a... Uh, it's always an honor. and It's always humbling to be able to come into, amen, this house and, and speak, amen. Uh, you got good, such good pastors, amen, great people of God. And we're honored by them, amen. How many know when you honor gifts, they can bless you? When you honor the gifts, they can bless you. You can really get something when you honor the gifts, amen. Now, in Acts, the eighth chapter, um, it says in uh, verse, let's, let's look at verse one. We'll just read. Now Saul was consenting to his, uh, to his death. Talk about Stephen. At that time, a great persecution rose against, uh, rose against uh, the church, which was at Jerusalem. How many know persecution is getting ready to come? And, and we're already, you know, we've experienced a little bit of it, but it's really getting ready to be released. And, um, it says it rose against the church that was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. Amen. So the apostles stayed and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And we know that Stephen's name means um, faithful witness. Amen. Uh, and and he's a, he was a martyr. And verse 3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. And he thought he was doing the will of God. Amen. Uh, and in verse 4, there, there, though, therefore those who were scattered uh, went everywhere preaching the word. Now, how many know the commission was to go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? But the, how many know that sometimes God has to allow things to happen that will scatter us so we will begin to do what he's called us to do? And um, I don't I like it when God does uh, strange things. Come on, amen. And then you don't know how to, you, don't know how to, um, you know, to, de to determine what, what's really going on. Sometimes it seems a little bit confusing. He's like, God, what's going on now? What is this? And the Lord is not, come on, amen. He doesn't have to tell you everything. Come on, amen. And, um, uh, but he wants us to be able to flow with his spirit and, uh, and move with the Holy Spirit. I, I like to move with the Holy Ghost, amen, where however the Spirit's moving. And when persecution and darkness increases in the earth, more attacks, you're going to have to be more sensitive to the voice of God because God's going to be strategically directing us in different places so we can be most effective, amen? Um, and and we'll, we'll begin to see that. But I believe we need to get ready. And I know your pastors have been getting you ready. They've been teaching you very well. I've been hearing a lot of the, the messages. Come on, amen, excerpts and different things of the messages that they've been preaching. And um, I tell you this right now, you guys are equipped, amen. Uh, and the word, you're getting the word, you're, you're being equipped. But I felt like the Lord was saying to me that the spirit of an evangelist was on this meeting tonight. And isn't it interesting that the songs went in the direction they did uh, about the nations and then the gospel and, uh, and uh, you know, from, from one generation to the next. And I thought, Lord, this is something because I had no 
no uh, plans to deal with this, but I felt like there was a spirit of an evangelist on this service tonight. And um, that God wanted to give us the heathen for our inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. And that the Lord wants us to turn our eyes toward the harvest because the harvest is plenteous, but the labor is a few. And, and so the commission upon the church now is to go and get them. Come on. Amen. That's our responsibility to make disciples of all men. Many times we get used to being we sitting and being taught the word and, and getting a lot of information and, and getting this, but we're not actually, you know, engaging that information and utilizing it to actually get the to get the gospel out to those who need it. But I feel like the Lord says, I'm getting ready to release a spirit of an evangelist like never before. Come on, amen, on the church. And we're getting ready to really start going out and getting the lost. Amen. And um Get ready for a harvest. Get ready for your seat to be filled right next to you. Come on, amen. If your seat is empty right now, get ready for it to be filled because the Lord said the spirit of an evangelist is coming upon you right now. Amen. He's given you the heathen for your inheritance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I remember one time the Lord told me this. It was so powerful. He said, he said, let me, let me, let me take my harvest through you. It was powerful. He said, let me take my harvest through you. In other words, God was saying, it's my harvest and I'm going to use you to take it. Come on. Amen. And I was like, Lord, yes, God, whatever you want to do through me. Come on. Amen. And so I feel like this, that the Lord was showing me that there's going to be a great release of signs, wonders and miracles that are going to begin to happen. How many believe that right now? I want you to lift your hands up and say, Lord, let me be one who operates in signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on. I heard in my spirit that a mission mandate is on this church. This is a missions church. Come on. Amen. And it's on this church. Amen. I also saw the spirit of revival on this church. The Lord said the spirit of revival is on this church. This church is not just, come on, amen. Come on, just a church, a teaching church, but it's a revival church. God doesn't want you to forget the revival that happened before, but there's going to be a revival that's going to be, come on, amen, much greater than what was before. The revival that is coming is going to be much more greater than what it was before for this ministry. Oh, man, that's really good. The Lord said, I'm making this ministry a launching base. Come on, amen, to launch people into their purpose. Amen. It's not just going to be a place to be taught, but a place to launch people to come on into what God is calling them to be. I saw longevity on the leaders in your ministry. I saw longevity on your, on your leaders. Amen. I just felt like God was telling me, amen, that, that, uh, that Vernon and Mary were going to have longevity. And they've already, you've already seen that. But there, it's going to be more longevity for the move of God. I believe that God's going to let them see the fulfillment of the promise that they've been waiting on regarding the great revival that is going to be released. And I feel like the Lord was showing me that he was giving you longevity. Now, listen, I just got this revelation uh, as I was driving. Come on, somebody, man, down, down the road. I'd be getting downloads while I'm driving. Come on. They're like, are you safe? Because I'd be doing like this, you know. The Lord be watching over me. Amen. At least you'll know I'm getting the download. Come on, somebody. Amen. I saw longevity on the leaders in the ministry. I also saw that God was sending us here tonight, me and Brother Brian, to help in the area of activation. And that, that he wanted to stir up dormant giftings and abilities. That people needed to be activated and stirred up and, and released into purpose and into destiny. Some of you are waiting, come on, for something to happen. And God is like, I've already, I've already released my power. Now, how many know that part of how you activate is stir up? Amen. How many know the Bible tells us that in the book of, uh, of, of 2 Timothy 1? Amen. Let me go there and look at that. I love that verse. How many like that verse? Amen. All right. Yeah. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Now, this is another persecution time too. Because he starts talking about that later on, about the, the persecution that he's going through. But look at verse, uh, f um, let's see, verse 6. Therefore, I remind you, stir up the gift of God. So now we know that God will use the people who are apostolic and prophetic by nature to stir you up 
or to activate you. But then the commission comes upon you to keep yourself stirred. Many times they will preach and they will teach in a way that will, will stir you. Come on, amen. And then as they're, and then when they stir you, then you, come on, amen, as a result of that, when they stir you as, amen, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm sorry, y'all. My pants are, I forgot my belt. And that's why I'm doing like this, y'all. <laughs> And I mean, and you know, you know, I can't stand it. I'm up here. I feel like I'm a, a hood or some hood dude or something. I've, I don't have this problem. I don't know what it is. I, praise the Lord. N nothing's going to. You got a belt? All right. No way. I don't want your pants to fall down. Come on. Amen. We, we got to watch it here. Come on. Amen. They're not going anywhere. I'm just letting you know if it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm drooping or something or uh, bagging or whatever they call it. It ain't on purpose, I tell you that. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So don't even judge people. Sometimes you see people walking down the street, they might have just forgot their belt. Come on, amen. <laughs> okay, amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. That helps right there. If I had a safety pin, I would have pinned them to me. Come on, amen. To my shirt or something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we got to stir up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we got to stir up. Come on, amen. Uh, the gifts and the abilities of the Lord. And activate them in you. Now, one of the things that apostles and prophets do is that they operate with evangelists. Because what happens is evangelists, they team up. They team up together with evangelists because you see here in this book, uh, in the... Um, well, let me just read this first and then we'll go, we'll go back to Acts. Verse 7 says, uh, well, verse 6 says, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the language of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? But a power, love, and a sound mind. So back to the 8th chapter, and it says here in the 8th chapter uh, that <clears throat> in verse um, 4, therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. So there was an activation. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Now, Philip was an actual evangelist. Amen. Somebody said evangelist. Let me just say something about the ministry of the evangelist. The ministry of the evangelist is not, come on, just a ministry of preaching. They have, they have with them certain giftings and abilities of signs and wonders and miracles that follow their ministry. Amen. That's their specific Simon. So one of the things, the reason why God's put the spirit of an evangelist on this church is because he wants this church to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles. And he wants it to be a normal occurrence. Come on, in this ministry. If you're going to be a missions uh, mandated church with the, come on, amen, with that, that, that revival spirit. You see, that came with Philip's, Philip's ministry, the evangelist. Revival is directly connected to the evangelist. Come on, y'all. It's not the prophet. Come on, the prophets may prophesy about things that are going to happen. Come on, and the apostles may go in, and, but they come in. Notice the evangelists were there first. Philip went, come on, there first. As it says, he was in, come on, preaching in, in uh, Samaria. And he preached Christ to them. And then the verse 6 says, and the multitudes with one accord uh, heeded the things spoken by Philip. You see that? Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. I feel like God is saying, who will take this mantle of the spirit of the evangelist on them? Come on, amen. And uh, so they, they begin to see these miracles and stuff. It's hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Not only did they see the miracles, they heard them. Isn't that interesting? They heard miracles. How many of you can hear some miracles? And so the miracles they were hearing, come on, amen. In verse 7, was unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Amen. It didn't say there was a full blown conversation going on with the demons. It just said that they was crying out. Come on. Amen. Right. It was crying out. And this is here. And, um, <clears throat> and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And notice what happened in verse eight. And there was great, what joy in that city. Come on. Amen. How many know that, after this great breakthrough and deliverance comes and healings and miracles and that happens, great joy comes in the city. How many know that the, the city needs to be activated with joy? Come on, amen. 
And so the reason why we're not seeing joy, even amongst ourselves, is because of the lack of people being set free from the devil. Come on, somebody, amen, and bondages. And once we start seeing people get set free, then joy will begin to be, come on, amen, manifested as a result of that. And I believe the spirit of vengeance, not just on this church, but I believe it's being released at this time in the earth. Come on, somebody, amen. And the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready to activate my evangelists like never before. And the miracles that you've heard about in the years be, be, past, you're going to start seeing a manifest that come on in your midst. Come on, and you're not going to, man, I feel the anointing right now. You're not going to have to come on, amen, try to work it up. It's just going to start manifesting. My goodness. I was in uh, Pakistan uh, um, with uh, uh, Anwar Fazel, and uh, I was in his, in his ministry. He's, he's got a pretty huge following of people that come to get miracles and stuff. I'm telling you, it's, it's incredible. And uh, we were walking out to go on the stage, and I kid y'all not, over 100,000 people were there. Come on, somebody, amen. Over 100,000 people were there. And as he began to come up, we began to all come up on the stage, get ready to minister. Uh, and, and I got a chance to do a little singing. Come on, amen. And, and I mean, I, I couldn't break out like I really wanted to, though, because, you know, you know, I, I'd have, I'd have my daughter with me and Brother Brian wasn't with me. But the Lord was with me. Come on, amen. So I did a little bit of worship, amen, out there. But, man, I tell you, people were getting healed before they could even get, come on, to hear the sermon. Y'all, come on, somebody. Before the sermon was preached, before the, the leader took, come on, the platform to minister, the, 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 the miracles were manifesting. People were getting healed of all types of diseases. Crippled people were getting healed. Come on, tumors were leaving off people's bodies. Come on, blinded eyes were open and deaf ears. They were just coming up and getting in the line to tell everybody what had happened. And the service hadn't even started yet. Somebody say, God, send the miracles right here. Come on, amen. I believe that God's got his eye on this ministry and the mission mandate upon this house, and there's going to be a spirit of revival that's going to break out. Come on, in this church. We haven't seen anything yet. I want to decree that it's here now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say, it's here now. Amen. And so when you see this, now let's finish reading what happens here. I love this. I want to skip down. I don't want to go too deep into the next part, but I want you to skip down uh, to, um, let's see here. Oh, yes, Lord. Okay, let's look at verse 14. Now, when the apostles were, were who were of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. So they sent the other apostles to them to do what? It says, who when they come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You see, they receive an impartation. You see that? They receive an impartation. They receive an activation. See, that's what this is about. Come on, amen. How many know that we're not here just to have a good service? Come on, amen. And to walk out here. But we're here because we need business for the kingdom. And, and uh, the enemy understands this. And so we're very, as you can tell, we're very, our, our, our charge on us is very militant. Come on, and aggressive. And the reason why it is because we're dealing with force of darkness. Come on, amen, that we have to be aggressive. Come on, amen. I know people want to act like, you know, oh, it doesn't take all of that. And I just like for it to be. And I'm not saying we don't need to be quiet. That's a good thing, too, being quiet. But, but there are times, come on, amen, the devil loves it when you're quiet because you ain't doing nothing. Come on, amen. There's a time for all of those different, come on, amen, uh, uh, stages of, 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 of communing with the Father and whatever. And I'm going to tell you right now, now is the time, come on, that the sound, come on, amen, of the Lion of Judah needs to come out of your mouth. Come on, amen, and strike the enemy because these forces are not planned. Come on, somebody, amen. But notice what happens there. Evangelist is with, amen, the apostles and prophets, and they're doing the ministry. And then you'll see, amen, that later on, as it gets in, you'll hear there were prophets and teachers, come on, amen, that showed up in Scripture as well. And I believe this is important here because the teaching ministry brings knowledge and understanding and establishes you. Come on, amen, and, and, and gets you uh, rooted and grounded in the Word. And so we need that ministry, and the ministry of the teacher and even the prophet, they're pretty much stationary ministries. Come on, Amen. And, and until they are sent on a mission to go into a, a local church to literally prophesy, come on, amen, and help build. And thank God for the in-house prophets. Come on, amen, in the church. How many of you need some in-house prophets in the church? 
to help confirm and strengthen and support a man of the leadership. Come on, that is there. Amen. I believe that God says tonight he wants to bring salvation to the lost. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I believe that with all my heart. I also believe that God wants to uh, deliver somebody tonight that has some bondages. And I, I heard specifically smoking. God wants to set you free. I just, I heard it specifically. I heard it specifically. It was almost like a chain smoker. Come on, amen. Somebody's struggling with it. Uh, and uh, I felt like God was saying that he wanted to deliver somebody from that tonight. I'm hearing little squeaks and stuff, little squeaks and sounds. Mm. <laughs> I don't know who it is. I'm just giving what the Lord gave me. So, Brother Brian, won't you come up and say something here before we start praying? Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I just, um, first of all, you know, I, I just want to give honor to the Lord. It's always a blessing to be here. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a builder by nature and then in the natural, you know, I can, I'm, I'm a little handy when it comes to, you know, that type of stuff. But in the spirit, you know, I'm, I, I see construction everywhere and in everything. And, um, you know, the last time that we were here, you know, as apostle, uh, just got up and, and talked about. You know, we really talked about hearing the voice of the Lord. <laughs> He's got the belt of truth now. The armor is complete. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. The Lord is faithful. Amen. Let there be a sign that the Lord shall supply all your need according to your, his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Even a belt. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Come on. <laughs> uh, I would have gave him mine, but it was too big and I needed myself. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Um, <laughs> but um, I just want to bring some confirmation to what Apostle was sharing and what he was, what he was releasing. And I think it's important you know, part of what happens in these days is that, you know, we're, we're kind of conditioned to hear God's voice through men. But it doesn't mean that, like it says in First Thessalonians 5, to not despise prophecy. Because we have to understand that even though that, you know, God wants to speak to us directly and we need to have an, an intimate relationship with God and communication, meaning we need to have an ear to hear what he's saying. I mean, that's God's highest desire for us. Come on. Amen. Uh, but there are times when, like he was saying, that God will send men and women into places to release a word on his behalf that helps activate something in that ministry. Amen. That helps to bring something, release an impartation, cause something to come forth on another level. Amen. And um, I just want to bring confirmation because um, all day I've been praying and it came out again up here about uh, that scripture. Let's just go there to Romans. Romans chapter 10. See, and because I really believe that part of what we're seeing in the earth, in, in Russia and the Ukraine, is a result of the gospel not being preached around the nations. Because since 2020, when COVID hit, how many know there were sanctions after sanctions, countries locking themselves down, not taking in anybody and in, in any international travelers? The gospel couldn't be sent around the world like it was uh, previous, previously. And so, and then everybody went online. And when everybody went online, you know, before everybody went online, you could get thousands and thousands of followers. How many know you got people that do stuff on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and they doing silly stuff? How to, how to take off a, a break that they put on your car because you ain't paid your parking tickets. And you got thousands and thousands of people 
that are watching this video. But when it comes to the preaching of the gospel, you're getting a handful of people watching this video. Before COVID and before, you know, everybody had to go online, it wasn't like that. You can get a ton of people to hear the gospel going around. And so now all the algorithms have been changed and because they're muzzling the voice. The enemy wants the, the voice of God, the preaching of the gospel to be muzzled in the earth. He doesn't want it to get around in the earth because it releases. There's a power behind the preaching of the gospel that the devil can't do anything with. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Romans 10. And I was praying this prayer. I was praying this prayer um, earlier, starting at voice, vo uh, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Come on, somebody. There's hearing that comes from the preaching of the gospel. See, even as we're up here preaching right now, there's, there's the capacity to hear that's released from us preaching up here right now. Amen? And if you receive it, it, it actually gives you the ability to hear what God is saying. And when you hear what God is saying to you, what happens? Faith comes. Now you can believe it. Wait a minute. I can believe this. I've shared my testimony many times. I rejected people preaching the gospel to me, handing me Bible tracts. I rejected all of that. But I responded to the voice of the Lord, a man saying that I was anointed. God, God, God revealed himself. He made himself known. He removed scales off of my eyes. When I heard him say that I was anointed. Now, that's just real simple. But what happened was is that the, the capacity for me to hear when I heard that word and also to believe that God was real. Because I was high and drunk while I heard it. And right after I heard it, I wasn't high and drunk no more. Amen. I was sober. And... And I knew that God was in the room. I actually thought I was going to die. I thought that this was my time. My time was up on the earth because it was so real to me. It was more real than anything I had ever experienced in my life because I heard that word that I was anointed. Amen. That's the power. That's why the preaching the gospel is foolish. Because who knew that something like preaching the gospel would actually cause millions and billions of people to get saved and come to know the Lord. Amen. There's a power in it that the devil can't do anything with. So we need preachers like never before in the earth. We need preachers. Amen. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Come on. How many preachers do we have in the room right now? See, there's not many that raised your hand. But I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Amen. How many of you are born again believers in here? Let me let me read up a little bit before I finish. Let me let me read up in here a little bit. <laughs> let me read up in here. This is what it says I'm, I'm about uh, born again believers. Um, I'm looking for this verse. It's so different. Every Bible, I, everything I look at is different in here when I'm reading the Bible. Verse 8, but it says, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Amen. That is the word of faith which we preach. It didn't say those that were called to preach, those that were anointed to preach. Amen. This is talking about born-again believers. How many got the spirit of God on the inside of you? Amen. Come on. That means the word of faith is near you. It's in your heart, in your mouth, the word of faith which we preach. Amen. So how many preachers do we have in the room? We associate preachers with being up here behind the pulpit. <laughs> and, and, and they have to have a certain look, you know, and a certain swag and... No, you, Apostle's got it. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> I 
I mean, that's how it is in the minds of people, right? That's how it is in the mind. Apostle's just himself, by the way. He's very humble. And, and I think that it's one reason why what moves through him is so powerful because of the humility. But let me just say this. We got to stop putting stereotypes on what a preacher is and start making ourselves available to preach the gospel. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. See, I believe that God is sending a preacher to some of our family members that won't listen to us preach the gospel to them. <laughs> Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord on this word. The Lord told me, he said that this year there was going to be, I saw it in prayer, like I saw destruction in what looked like a war. I, I don't know. I shared this on our New Year's Eve service. I don't know why I saw it like that, but that's, I saw it like, you know, uh, things being blown up and just in disarray and chaos all around and in the midst of it, I saw the church growing. I saw God increasing the church, adding to the church, adding souls to the church in the midst of it. But Brian, you're not a famous nationally known prophet. I don't care. God decided to show me this and I believe it enough, not for me just to declare it, but to say, I want the people of God to be stirred up in it, and I want to create an expectation in you to receive it and to believe it and then to move out and become a part of it. Because God wants us to be a part of it. That means there's somebody at the gas station you're going to run into that God's going to give you a word to preach the gospel. The anointing's going to come on you. The spirit of God's going to move on you. And the word of God that's in your mouth and in your heart's going to start being released. You're going to have an unction for that person. You're going to have compassion for that person. And how many know God's going to pack you? He's already packed you with spiritual gifts and things that God wants to use to confirm his word. Signs and wonders, hallelujah, to confirm his word. You might be pumping gas, casting out a devil out of somebody while you pumping some of that five, six, seven dollar a gallon and gas. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Walmart is one of my favorite mission fields. <laughs> I ran into this guy that I've known, that I had known back in the early 90s, 94, 95. I ran into him at Walmart about a month ago. I hadn't seen him in what year is this, 2022? <laughs> Says about 1997, 1998, I hadn't seen this guy. He looked different. I, I didn't even, this, he, he, he looked, he looked like, I mean, like, like a grizzly bear. <laughs> he did. I, and you know why it was shocking to me is because this guy was really clean. He wore suits all the time. <laughs> He kept, you know, a nice haircut. You know, he spoke well of himself, but this, but he looked completely different. And he's like, he comes and hugs me, and he's like, what's going on with you? And I start telling him, man, I'm just walking with Jesus, serving the Lord. And I start telling him, you know what's awesome is that God revealed himself to me. And I thought I was just going to die. And I said, you know, a lot of people think that they can just go to church and they can just do whatever they want to do, and then they think that once they die, they'll get before God and get everything worked out. I said, but it doesn't work like that. What would happen if it didn't work like that? And this brother was stuck, and he didn't want to leave me. And I could tell he didn't want to leave me. Now, I, I, didn't, I couldn't because we kept getting interrupted, people coming in between us and all that. So I couldn't take it further. But I guarantee you there is a seed sown in that brother right now where he's thinking, am I right with God? Because he didn't want to leave me. Am I right with God? We need preachers right now, amen? We need preachers. Back down to verse 15. And how should they preach unless they are sent? So we only associate being sent with apostles but God is saying right here that preachers are sent, and God wants to send some preachers to go and preach the gospel. Amen? There's places that God wants to use us. Our workplace can be a, 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 a perfect place for us to preach the gospel. You need to use wisdom. You don't want to lose your job. 
But listen, if you make yourself available to the Spirit of God, he'll open up opportunity for you to preach the gospel. Amen? God gave me a business. He said, every business I give you will be a, a tool of discipleship. I lead people to, to the Lord through my business. He said, everything that he gives me will be a tool for discipleship. I'm focused completely on preaching the gospel. Amen? It says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So we believe the report of so many things in the world, so much negativity in the world, and, and yet we don't believe the report of the Lord. And, and the, the report of the Lord is that even in the midst of all of this, it's really a preparation. It's preparing the hearts of men and women to actually hear what God has to say to them through a preacher. In, these, in this climate that where the world is, it's, they're conditioned to hear. They're desperate. They're, they're afraid. Many of them are masking their fear through, through drugs, through different things, a lot of gaming, come on somebody, a lot of different uh, pursuits of lust. They're just masking fear because they don't know if they're right with God. And we need some people that are anointed, that are called and appointed. And if you're a born again believer, that's every one of you in this room. Hallelujah. God wants you to know that. It's not some special person some special orator, someone who's really eloquent, knows how to use words well, words, words worth and wordsmith and somebody who got the gift of gab. Come on, somebody. God wants somebody that's available, who he, who he can put his word in their mouth, who'll be ready to release the word as the Holy Ghost moves on them when he sends them to preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need, the only way we come to Jesus is by faith. So we need preachers that are releasing the word of God so that faith can be built up for people to receive the Lord. Amen. Now, during, during the worship, I saw this. I heard this prayer. I started praying it. And one thing that I started to pray, because Apostle said that evangelist comes with, with, you know, special gifting and signs and wonders that God equips them with. And as I was praying for the generation, I started to pray ones that won't stand for disease. And when I heard the word disease, I stopped myself. But as he began to preach, I remembered it. And the Lord said that I'm going to equip this generation with the healing anointing when there's going to be so much affliction that comes through sickness and disease, but I'm going to raise up a generation that specifically has a healing anointing and a deliverance anointing to drive out the spirit of infirmity, says the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While Pastor Vern was up here and he was just singing, holy, 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 I heard the Lord say there's the spirit of revival on him and this house. Just confirmation. The spirit of revival is on him and Pastor Mary and this house. That means if you're a part of it, you can receive that mantle for the spirit of revival. We got to stop praying for revival and become the revival. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to share here. Go to 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 4. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Shakara ba satana maya. Because I believe God's going to awaken and charge the evangelists on the inside of you. Hallelujah. He's going to awaken and charge the, the evangelists on the inside of you. It's going to stand up. Some of you is going to stand up in, 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 uh, in, in the nighttime. God's going to give you dreams, and he's going to give you visions, and you're going to wake up, and that thing's going to stand up in you with a burden to preach the gospel to the lost. Hey. Hey. Whew. Verse 1, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2 says, preach the word. Look at the person next to you and say, preach the word. Come on, say, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are in that time right now. Come on, somebody. But according to their own desires or their own lusts, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. God, we, the reason why it's so important that we are preaching the gospel and preaching the truth is because we have to love the truth in order to endure until the end. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We got people turning away from the truth when they should be falling in love with the truth, coming into the knowledge of the truth. And they're going to be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. There's going to be some stuff that happens to you. There's going to be some stuff that you got to go through. But I'm telling you, God says endure. But God is not telling you to endure on your own. God says, I give strength to the weary. And I'm giving strength to you today to not only endure, but to do what it says following. After you endure the afflictions, it says do the work of an evangelist. Hallelujah. Fulfill your ministry. So for everybody, regardless if you're apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, brother or sister in the Lord Jesus Christ, a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the charge is to do the work of an evangelist. Come on, look at the person next to you. Tell them, do the work of an evangelist. Now tell them, fulfill your ministry. Come on, say, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. This is the commission upon all of us. God said, go and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. He says, I will give you signs and wonders to confirm the word. He doesn't matter if you're male or female, if you're black or white, if you're young or old, if you're short or tall, if you're rich or poor. God says, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Hey, hey. We need to preach the gospel like never before. And it's definitely on this house. Then we can look around the room and see things in the natural and see empty chairs. But what I see, hallelujah, is I see new converts coming in. I see new fresh life coming in. And you know what? God says, I want you to make it simple. Just begin to share your testimony. Just begin to share what I've done for you. You don't have to make it, make it difficult. God said, I'm going to give you what to say if you just go and just open the door. I'm going to give you open doors of utterance so you can make known the mysteries of Christ if you just make yourself available to do the work of an evangelist. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hey. So, Father, in Jesus' name, let the evangelist and the spirit of an evangelist and the mantle of the evangelist, God, fall upon this ministry. Let it be stirred up in this ministry. And every person that is here tonight, God, we pray that a burden, God, for the lost would fall upon everyone, that it would be stirred up and awakened in everyone, God, that we would not stand idly by with the word of God in our mouth and not release it. We're available to be sent to whom you want to preach the gospel to, Lord. We will go as you send us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.